Okay. <clears throat> uh, the summer of 1955 was very interesting. <clears throat> I got that job as an interpreter for Colonel Earl Kent from Ohio. Uh, he taught me quite a bit. Um, that's when I discovered I was very disappointed at my language, <clears throat> mainly English. But during that summer, I learned a lot from the soldiers, the corporals, and uh, the people that were surrounding the area. <clears throat> the Americans' um, advisors didn't really do much. Um, the activities were kind of low-key. They inspected the troops and trying to get uh, equipments and ammunitions and rifles and so on to um, sent from be sent from the U.S. to the Vietnamese Army. <clears throat> um, one interesting thing is um, um, the American advisors had our um, medical staff that take care of them. And one of the nurses were, uh, was a Filipino girl. And I got to be a friend of her. And I really liked her. And during that summer, I discovered that my taste in uh, girls probably leaning towards the foreign girls instead of the Vietnamese girls. That was quite interesting. Um, my family had the tradition of fixing up the children to be married to their friends' kids. You know, so it's a big family, and um, uh, one friend talked to another saying that, oh, your daughter probably uh, is interested in marrying my son. So that's how it started in Vietnam, and the marriage is arranged. Um, we never dated anybody, we just got fixed up. And all my brothers and sisters were done that way. <clears throat> in fact, my uh, younger sister <clears throat> was fixed up with um, a family that has uh, a guy studying in France. So she never met this guy. Just uh, through pictures and um, description from the parents. And my parents were uh, agreed to send my little sister all the way from Vietnam to France to marry this guy. And you know, that was the extreme case. But it turns out that marriage was okay. Um, marriage in Vietnam is not something romantic. Um, and uh, I'll just ignore the phone.